Everybody praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. The Lord give you an explosion of miracles tonight in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for this hour. And we thank you for the great expectation of your people here and all over the world. We're asking, Lord, as we read your word, hear your promise, touch your power, we pray miracle will happen in every life. Amen. Miracle of salvation, of healing, of deliverance, of total supernatural freedom in every life tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Confirm your word in every life. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. Tonight, we come once again to reveal another aspect of the supernatural freedom. Tonight, I'm talking to you on the full price page for our all-round freedom. Freedom all-round in every area of our lives, all round freedom. And Christ, Christ the Savior, Christ the Lord, Christ the Healer, Christ the Deliverer, Christ the Redeemer. He came to this world and He came to pay the price for your salvation, for your deliverance, the price. For your redemption. And we're told in First Peter chapter 1, verse 18. In First Peter chapter 1, verse 18, for as much as she know that she was not redeemed, but chased with corruptible things as silver and gold, but from your vain conversation, received by tradition from your fathers, from our fathers, grandfathers, great-great-grandfathers, all the way back to Adam. Because he and Eve gave birth to the rest of the world. They fell. They got into bondage. Oppression came. Sickness came. When they were created, there was no sin, there was, there was no sickness, there was no sin, therefore, there was no pain, there was no sin, therefore, there was no satanic affliction. Sin came in, and sin drew all those consequences, and we were actually in bondage to sin, in bondage to sickness, in bondage to Satan and to be free we need someone to come and pay the price for our guilt for our condemnation and he paid the price the total price and he did everything there is to be done everything expected by the heavenly father and because of that he has now paid the full price for our freedom all round freedom freedom from sin freedom from sickness freedom from satan freedom from condemnation freedom from corruption and freedom from all the consequences of our evil look at verse 19 in verse 19 but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. As I've said tonight, we're looking at the full price for our all round freedom. I'm talking about you. The full price for your all round freedom. Make it personal. After me, say the full price. Page 
for my all round freedom. There's nothing disturbing your freedom tonight. You're free in Jesus' name. Three things we're looking at before we pray. Number one, the great price of redemption from the ancient furnace. Ancient furnace. The furnace of affliction. And the furnace of condemnation. And the furnace of the manifestation of the evil power of the devil. Ancient. As old as Adam. And then it went through all over the world, in every race, in every country, in every generation, that ancient furnace in which we have been suffering. Tonight, your freedom has come. The great price of redemption from the ancient furnace. Number two, the godly passion in repentance towards assured forgiveness. When God reveals to us that we have offended him, it's like the person you love and the person who loves you so much and is the source of all revenue in your life, is responsible for everything good in your life. And all of a sudden, you look at his face and he frowns. And you say, I sense something has gone wrong. He said, you have offended me. And you caught the cord of fellowship. And you separate yourself from me. And what you have done is like a dagger in my heart. That brings the passion of sorrow, the shame, the sorrow. And the feeling you have within you, and in sorrow, in passion, you, you crumble on your knees, and you repent, and you say, I am so sorry to wound a loving heart like yours. That's repentance. Many people don't understand repentance. They are dancing, I'm repenting. That's no repentance. They are smiling. I'm repenting. That's no repentance. You put a dagger in the heart of love of the Almighty God. And you said, See what you've done. Heaven is sorrowful. God is sorrowful. And the Lord Jesus is sorrowful. And the angels hang their head because mortal man has offended God and he put a dagger in the heart of the love of God you're sorrowful you have the godly sorrow the godly passion in repentance towards assured forgiveness number three in the guided path to recovery through active faith the lord guides you says yes i love you still and i want your sins all forgiven that's why i said the lord jesus christ my only begotten son to pay the price and to die for you and to bring you back into fellowship and relationship with the almighty god the guided path to recovery through active faith. Look at number one. Number one, the great price of redemption from the ancient furnace. Look at the price. We're looking at Psalm 49, reading from verse 7. It says, none of them can by any means redeem his brother. None. No king none no emperor none no man none no religious founder none and there's no denominational head none there is no man there is no woman on earth any generation that can redeem his brother no give to god a ransom for him nobody could have paid the price and because of that, God looked at all of heaven. Not even angel Gabriel, 
Michael, any other angel, any angel in heaven could pay the price. And of course, on earth, Adam, the first sinner, Eve, they could not pay the price. Cain, Abel, Enoch, all the people that ever lived, none could pay the price. Only one, only one, the only begotten Son of God in heaven, the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why he came, because nobody could pay the price for your freedom from the ancient furnace. Look at verse 8. In verse 8 it says, For the redemption of their soul is precious, so deep, so great, so precious, that no one could pay for it, and it ceases forever. But now God seen us in that furnace, Furnace of affliction. And you know, furnace had different grades and categories. There was the Egyptian furnace. There was the Babylonian furnace. And everything going on, even the same furnace has gradual or graded heat. In a time of Nebuchadnezzar, it said, I want that furnace heated seven times times more and so you understand when we're talking about furnace furnace higher furnace higher furnace higher there is earthly furnace there is eternal furnace the fire that never goes out and nobody could redeem anyone from the everlasting eternal furnace but one one, one, the Lord Jesus Christ who died, who shed his blood, who paid the price for your redemption and for your freedom. That's why the time you have the opportunity to be saved, to be taken out of the earthly furnace, of the eternal furnace, of the permanent perpetual everlasting furnace the time you have the chance to say yes lord my heart my mind my soul rest up to you i want to be saved and good enough i come on the basis not of my works that cannot pay the price i come not on the basis of what i've done religiously that cannot pay the price i come only on the marriage of jesus christ your perfect only begotten son he died on the cross and you have heard he said at the final time before he went from earth to heaven it is finished and because it is finished tonight it will save you it will deliver you out of that ancient furnace it will set you free tonight in jesus name look at deuteronomy chapter 4 i'm reading from verse 20 so you understand that this is coming directly from the word of god it says but the lord has taken you and brought you forth out of the iron furnace the lord has taken you and he has brought you forth out of the iron furnace. How did he do that? By the lamb that was killed. The lamb representing Christ. Until Christ came, behold the lamb of God. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. The blood of the lamb. The blood of the lamb. Not silver or gold. Not the works of man, not the efforts of man, not turning over a new leaf, only the blood of the Lamb took them and brought them out 
of the iron furnace, even out of Egypt, to be unto him a people of inheritance as she are this day. As she are this day. When you come out of that ancient furnace, then you belong to the Lord and you will not be in captivity anymore in Jesus' name. I look at um, uh, Jeremiah chapter 11, verse 4. In Jeremiah chapter 11, verse 4, it says, Which I commanded your fathers in the day that I brought them forth out of the land of Egypt from the iron furnace. From the iron furnace. It was that ancient furnace. Egypt was an ancient country, ancient nation, and they had that ancient ponies and they were to be tormented they tormented the people they put them to rigor and they made them to suffer and it's just the ugly representation of the eternal furnace awaiting every man and every woman and that eternal furnace will torment the soul will torment the spirit, will torment the body. And those who have gone there, we heard from one of them, when he said, I am tormented in this flame. I am tormented in this furnace. I'm tormented in the eternal, forever burning lake of fire that burns to sulfur and uh, burns with fire and brimstone and the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever and they had no rest day nor night anyone that refuses to be brought out now and to be redeemed and to be saved therefore for the sake of your own soul you want to come out of the earthly furnace now and also in preparation a readiness that you will not get into the eternal furnace a punishment for the people who live and die in sin, in evil, who live their lives rejecting the prize and the only one that can bring them out of the furnace. And the Lord said, I commanded your fathers in the day that I brought you forth out of the land of Egypt from the iron furnace saying, Obey my voice. Was his voice repent so that sin will not be your ruin? Was his voice repent so that you can come out of the earthly furnace and you can be redeemed and preserved and taken away from the gate of the eternal furnace will be my voice and do them according to all which I command you so shall ye be my people and I will be your God. God lives in heaven. When you are saved, when you accept the prize that takes us out of the ancient furnace, then you come to be a child of God, a son of God, a daughter of God, and you live with God forever and ever in heaven. If you don't, if you reject the prize, if you reject the Christ, if you reject the Savior, if you reject the opportunity of being taken away and being forgiven of your sin, then you'll go to the other side forever and ever. And that is the everlasting eternal furnace. Once somebody gets there, he cannot come out, cannot say now. I realized my mistake when I was on earth. I didn't respond to the price that was paid for me. And I lived carelessly. Somebody told me, an evangelist told me, a preacher told me. But I thought it was idle tale. Therefore, I didn't accept. Now I'm ready. Uh -uh, it's forever gone. Once a man die, it says there is this it's a final verdict. A man dies and he has rejected salvation until his death. 
is forever sealed but today is the day the opportunity you have to say I will seek the Lord while he may be found I will call upon him while it's near I return I turn away from my wickedness and from my foolish thoughts and I return unto the Lord and then he pardons you he will abundantly pardon we're looking at Isaiah chapter 48 and I'm reading from verse 10 Isaiah chapter 48 verse 10 it says behold I have refined thee but not or silver I have reformed you and the price is not the price of silver all the money in the world all the money in all the banks of the world cannot redeem your soul that's why Jesus said what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world if you were to have all the money in all the banks of the world it will not redeem your soul it will not set you free if you were to be so prosperous that you are your wealth is greater than the wealth of the whole of your continent not only of your country if you were to be so wealthy as to have all the wealth of your continent all that still will not redeem your soul because it says behold I have refined thee but not or silver I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction he took us out he brought us out he redeemed us from the furnace of affliction and it's good we listen to him because he is the only one that determines the price of our redemption the price of our freedom and he wants to set us free from the ancient furnace tonight the opportunity is yours it will set you free it will take you out out of that iron furnace, out of that ancient furnace, and by implication, out of the eternal furnace, awaiting the people that reject the prize of the Almighty God. Look at verse 18. In verse 18, it says, Oh, that thou art hearkened to my commandments, then at thy peace being as a river and a righteousness at the waves of the sea when you listen to the lord and he says the path of sin leads to affliction and leads to the furnace the path of transgression leads to earthly and eternal furnace the path of sinfulness leads to burning and burning forever in hell fire the way of the transgressor is hard the affliction is unbearable and then he said oh that they had hacking unto my commandments then at their peace being as a river and thy righteousness are the waves of the sea and the peace of God will reign forever and ever in your heart in your life in Jesus name we're coming to point number two now point number two is the godly passion in repentance towards assured forgiveness assured forgiveness what do you think how do you see that affliction has been there and now the only one that can remove the affliction he says come come and i'll set you free and let's say for example like you know when we were very young uh, you took a piece of uh, meat from the pot and you were chewing that and uh, your mother then comes in and almost begins to cry i didn't i didn't know i have a thief 
for a child your mother almost begins to you know fall down to say what is this in my life I never knew I had a thief for a daughter and then as we're chewing the meat uh, you say hey, mommy I am sorry I am sorry and you kept on chewing the meat and while mommy was almost in tears you put even in her presence now you put your hand in a pot again uh, and took another piece of meat that I'm sorry I'm sorry has no meaning because what your mother is crying about and what your mother is trying to correct and what your mother is sorrowful about you repeat it in her presence when we sin it brings sorrow in the heart of God when we sin it brings sorrow in the heart of Christ who was nailed to the cross who died for us when we sin we nail him again it's like we're crucifying him again and he's sorrowful the sin that you commit the lie that you tell the deception they just throw out glibly it offends the Lord the adultery, the fornication the drunkenness and the smoking of whether ordinary cigarette or marijuana or whatever it pays the Lord and when you go into occultism into that evil powers and you join your life a life created by God you take that from God and you throw it to the hands of the devil and you are in covenant with the devil, the enemy of God it pays God to the very heart and then God comes to you and he says, I sent my evangelist to you I sent my servant to you to get you out of that sin and then the evangelist preaches the preacher declares the word of God and he says the Lord says repent and then you smile and say yes I want to repent that's not repentance and then you go back after the evening meeting the same cult and the same gang that God says this is an offense to heaven. You go back again to that cult and to that gang. That offends the Lord more. If you are going to repent, what it means is you realize the deadliness of sin. You realize the evil in the thing that you have done. And repentance means it shocks your heart. It pains your heart that you have gone astray and you turn and you're passionate about it. You're sorrowful about it. And you say, Lord, I was foolish. I, it was terrible. I couldn't think of anyone more stupid than I was that I could have done that against your heart of love. Your heart is broken, and then you surrender unto the Lord. Look at it in Second Corinthians chapter seven. I'm reading from verse ten. It says, "For godly sorrow worketh repentance, not godly laughter, and it's not frivolity, and it's not you know amatiza." I don't know the consequence of the sin I've committed and I just come. Hold on. They told her to raise up her hands. I'm raising up my hands. Are you there, God? Okay, forgive me. Forgiveness does not come that way. It says, for godly sorrow walketh repentance to salvation, not to be regretted of, but the sorrow of the world walketh death. The sorrow of the world when you lost a car you were so sorrowful that it almost gave you hypertension you are so sorrowful you couldn't eat you couldn't drink you almost killed yourself the sorrow of the world when you lost a job you almost died and you say how am i going to live now no joy no happiness no laughter you lost a job when you lost a pregnancy you almost collapsed how could i lose that the sorrow of the world what a death. But now you lose your soul and you are smiling. 
You lose the love of God and you are smiling. And you lose the fellowship with God and you are smiling to you, ignorant man, ignorant woman. The card that you lost is greater than the loss of your soul. The pregnancy that you lost is greater than the loss of your eternal soul. If you were sorrowful by losing something on earth, you must be terribly sorrowful because you lose your interaction and fellowship with God. That's why it says, for godly sorrow walketh repentance to salvation, not to be regretted of, repented of, regretted of, that's what it means, and but the sorrow of the world walketh death and as you come to the lord and you say lord now i realize this is a serious matter i don't want to die in my sin and go to the eternal furnace i come to you now have mercy on me and forgive me the lord will forgive you in jesus name but if while your mother is looking at you and you're chewing the meat you stole, you put your hand in the pot again and, you know, put another one in your mouth, your mother will not take your plea for forgiveness serious. The same thing with God. If while well, you're saying, God, forgive me, God, forgive me, I have done what I shouldn't have done. I have not done what I should have done. Forgive me, forgive me. And after the church service, forgive me, I have done what I shouldn't have done. You go back to the same thing again. The Lord does not counsel people serious and God does not waste his time or waste his love upon the people that want to keep on sinning, sinning, sinning and saying forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. He counts them serious. They want forgiveness. They want salvation when they are sorrowful for their sin and they turn away and they say never will I allow anything to get me back to that dungeon again and the Lord will have mercy on you. Look at Second Peter there, chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 9. Second Peter, chapter 3, we're looking at verse 9. It says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise that Christ is coming back, that the world is going to end, and that the world will go up in fire, and that God is going to make a new earth and a new heaven. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but his long suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish. If Christ had come last week, where would you be today? If you have not been saved, you'll be forever lost. That's why he's waiting. He said, I'll wait, I'll wait, I'll wait for another night. I'll wait for that boy. I'll wait for that girl. I'll wait for that man. I'll wait for that woman. It's not slack. Christ could have come, but because of you, he says, I'll wait. Tonight, I'll give him another chance. Tonight, I'll give her another chance. Because he is not willing that any shall perish, but that all shall come to repentance. And I see he's calling upon you today again, and he's saying, now, seriously, now, in a sober way, now, wholeheartedly, come out of your sin and come to the Savior. Tonight, you will respond in Jesus' name. Amen. Look at Luke chapter 3 and we're reading from verse 8. Luke chapter 3, we're reading from verse 8. Bring forth therefore fruits worthy of repentance. Bring forth therefore fruits worthy of repentance. Look at the boy I was talking about that took that meat out of the porch and mother came in and said what's that in your mouth and the child became so sorry and so sorrowful and you know put the meat out of his mouth stopped the enjoyment of the stolen meat 
and then will not touch any other thing and knelt down and said mommy that's the last time give me another chance forgive me this one i'm sorry i was so foolish i'm sorry i yielded to temptation i will do that no more that is the fruit of repentance when you have come to the Lord and you have said, Lord, I'm sorry for what I've done. I went the evil way. I went the wrong way. I went there in the night and I did nothing in the night. I went that under cover of darkness and I did that foolish thing under cover of darkness. I did that thinking nobody will ever see. But I can see that you up there, you see everything down below here, truly, honestly, wholeheartedly, from the depth of my heart, I turn, I repent. That is the passion, the godly feeling, the godly pain he wants you to have because of what you've done. And it is when you don't go that direction again. That is the fruit of repentance. Bring forth, therefore, fruits worthy of repentance. And begin not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. You know, Abraham called that fellow in hell. He said, son. He called him son. Physically, naturally, a Jew called him son. But he was still there. And Abraham could not help, could not get him out. Once somebody gets there, forever, forever, the fellow is lost. And don't begin to say, we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these tools to raise up children unto Abraham. He has the power to convert the people that have stony hearts and make them tender children of Abraham. He has the power to convert the people that have the stony heart of unbelief and give them the trusting heart of faith. God has power to turn all these tools. He has the power to turn the stubborn mind and turn that into a saved soul as you come to the Lord and you say, Lord, here I am. I want your salvation. And I want it so deeply and so honestly that I turn away from all the evil in my hand. God is able. God is able. He will do it today. In your life, he'll do it today. It will turn your mind against evil. It will turn your decision away from Satan and turn you to the Savior. And then you become a follower of Christ, a disciple of Christ, a child of God. And God says, I will dwell in them. And you also, you'll abide with him. Look at verse 9. In verse 9, and now all also, the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that bring, which bringeth forth good fruit, which bringeth forth not good fruit, is hewn down. Every tree, old, young, man, woman, every tree, very significant people, Tall trees, big trees, ancient trees. It's talking about men. Every tree, the size does not matter. The shape does not matter. And the income, substance does not matter. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is caught now and cast into the fire. But the Lord gives such chance today and he says if you will repent and turn and have a godly passion in repentance and turn unto the Lord with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind tonight, the grace is still available. And the Lord will change you. And the Lord will transform your life. And you will never, never be the same again in Jesus' name. Somebody there is shouting, Amen. Amen. 
Look at point number three now. Point number three. We're looking at the guided path to recovery through active faith. Guided path to recovery through active faith. You've been going on a road, and the road is leading to darkness, darkness, darkness. It's becoming darker and darker and darker. And you're feeling it in your soul. What's the edge of this road that is getting darker and darker and darker? And you don't know any other way. And you're living just like that. All of a sudden, a guide came to show you the way. And he said, look ahead, there's danger in this path you are going. The way of the transgressor is hard. And it gets harder and harder and harder. The way of the one who forsakes God, he leaves God behind and is following the path of evil. That way, that path is going darker and darker and more dangerous. But a guide now comes and he says, turn around. Look at that light over there. That's the light that you get. Keep on looking at that light. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. And as you turn from the path of darkness, and then you're looking at that light, the Lord Jesus, he leads you into the grace of God that brings salvation. He leads you into the goodness of God that brings recovery from sickness. He leads you into the guided path Past that leads to life eternal. And it comes to you today. He says, I'll take your hand. I'll guide you to the guided path to recovery through active faith. The Lord will guide you. I said the Lord will guide you. Look at this. Look at uh, Second Kings chapter 5. Uh, reading from verse 1. Now, Naaman, the captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man, a rich man, a successful man, a prosperous man, a man of authority and dignity with his master, and honorable because by him the Lord had given the deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor. Look at all those qualifications and look at the last part of the sentence but he was a leper. He was a leper. That spoils everything. The man is rich. The man is wealthy. The man is honorable. The man is great. The man is respected by the world but he is a sinner. But he is an adulterer. And the husband of those women, they look at him, they say, rich man, authoritative man, but he's messing up with my wife. The man is great. The eyes of the world, but is a leper, is a sinner. Until somebody came to guide him and guided him to the source of cleansing and the source of of recovery the guiding light is coming to you tonight and it will guide you to that place of total salvation and total recovery and total forgiveness in jesus name eventually go to the house uh, near the house of the prophet and the prophet sent a message to him like the message you are hearing and look at verse 10 in verse 10 it says and elisha sent a messenger unto him saying, Go wash in Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. And look at verse 11. In verse 11, and Naaman was wrath. Naaman was angry. He said, What? I'm a great man. I'm a rich man. I'm a man of position and power. And the man had the gumption, the authority to say to me to go and wash in Jordan. 
you know a person who is guided to the place where he will have salvation and he'll have total recovery from the bondage of sin and from the affliction you know that your private life you know the sin you know the defeat you have in your private life and now we bring to you we guide you by the word of the Lord that this is the only way of escape out of the ancient furnace, out of the eternal furnace, and then you see, look at this man, look at this preacher, in the public is mentioning that word adultery civilized men don't do that they don't mention adultery fornication in the public look at this man my friend what are you angry about if you were not an adulterer you will not be angry if you were not a fornicator you'll not be angry i came to show you the way out of your sin the way out of perishing and the way out of the ancient furnace where you are you should be very grateful but there are people like Naaman and Naaman was angry and he went away and said behold I thought he will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and strike his hand over the place and recover the leper I thought he wanted to be the preacher. I thought he will say this. I thought it will motivate me. I thought it will make me happy. I thought it will be social. And it will bring his sand and rub the hand of me. It's not what you thought. You are not going to dictate how you are going to have. You don't know the way. That's why you are sent the guide to guide you into salvation. And I pray your head will not reject your salvation. And that nothing will make you get angry at the direction, at the guide the Lord is giving you. Look at it now in verse 12. In verse 12, it said, And not a banner, a farpa, rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel. May I not wash in them and be clean so he turned and went away in a rage. My brother, anger will not take the leprosy away. Wrath will not take the leprosy away. Argument will not take the leprosy away. Canal comparison, Abana and Fapa, better than the rivers of Damascus, better than uh, uh, Jordan. All that will not take the leprosy away. And the servants knew that. And the people around him knew that. We all know, we know. All you need to do is come to Christ. Argument, I'm religious. Argument, I have my church. Argument, I've been to Jerusalem. Argument, I've taken water out of Jordan. Argument, I perform spiritual rites. My friend, argument, anger will not take the leprosy of sin away and will not take the guilt, the condemnation of sin away. The Lord is showing you the way. I pray you are come. I said, I pray you are calm. Why are we going to be angry? I came to tell you that, you know, you've been going this way a long time and you've not got the relief you want. And I say, come, I've been to Christ. He's giving me salvation. He's giving me peace of mind. He's giving me the power to go and live in newness of life. And the thing that have been good, available for me, I came to show to you as well. You should be very grateful and get up there and say, show me the way. And I said, this is the way. Walk here, there, and in, and you'll find salvation for your soul in Jesus' name. And so, we're looking at verse 13, and in verse 13 and his servants came near and spake unto him and said my father the prophet 
uh, if the prophet had bid thee do some great thing, uh, like give some great amount of money, like give a piece of land to him, uh, wouldest thou not have done it? How much rather then uh, when he says to thee, wash and be thou clean, wash. And without it, that's all he said. What can wash my stain away? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can take my guilt away, my condemnation away? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. All the Lord is sending us to tell you is the blood of Jesus can cleanse you from the stain of sin, can purge you from the guilt and the condemnation of sin. Come and the Lord will forgive you and change your life. And that's all we're saying. And he told the man, all the prophet is saying is come, wash and be clean. And then in verse 14, we're told in verse 14, then wait he down. You can be an encouragement to your neighbor there. You can be an encouragement to your wife there. You can be an encouragement to your husband there. You can be an encouragement to the backslider there. You can be an encouragement to somebody there who is saying, what are they saying? Why are they saying it like that? And you can explain to them what the preacher is saying is what God has said in the Bible. That if we're going to have recovery, salvation, forgiveness and the peace of mind and the joy of belonging to the Lord. What he's saying is we need to get up. We need to turn away from our sin and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and he will give us that salvation and redemption and he will pardon us. It will take our name away from the book of the condemned and it will put our name in the book of the converted. And then when you explain like that and your word matches my word and your explanation matches my preaching they okay i understand now and then they come and they give their lives to the lord and god will forgive their sins and God will redeem their soul and God will turn them in the right direction and you will write their name in the book of life in heaven and it can happen tonight there, there, there. It can happen tonight. Young man, there the Lord is calling you today and it can happen to you tonight that all the ways of darkness you forsake, all the powers of darkness you forsake, all the charm that you surround, that you surround yourself with, you throw them away and you say, Lord, I repent. I come unto the Lord and the Lord will totally turn your life around it will forgive you tonight. It will save you tonight. It will transform your life tonight. And he did himself seven times in Jordan according to, according to, according to the saying of the man of God and his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child and he was clean. He was clean. He was clean. Clean, he, he, Naaman, he, the leper, he, the sinner, he, the condemned, he was clean. Tonight, you can be cleaner in Jesus' name. The blood of Jesus will wash you. The blood of Jesus will cleanse you. And as you get up and turn away from every sin, you can remember, and you are deeply sorry, deeply sorry that you were in such a condition before. And now you give yourself or reservedly unto the Lord. Forgiveness has come tonight. Salvation has come tonight. Am I talking to somebody there tonight? Did you hear what God was telling you? Are you going to do what the Lord has told you? And then forgiveness will come. Salvation will come. The grace of God will come to your life tonight in Jesus' name. It's bowed and eyes closed. It's bowed and eyes closed. The Lord once again in love, in mercy, in compassion, 
is calling upon you now. The great God of heaven is calling you, little man, little woman. He's calling you that you'll be guided into the place of forgiveness and salvation. And you're saying, oh Lord, unmistakably, I've heard your voice today. I'm coming out of that darkness, out of that sin, out of that evil habit, out of that occultism, out of any connection with Satan. Lord, today I offer myself and I come out of my evil, and I come into the salvation of the Lord. Wherever you are, the offer is coming again today. Wherever you are, the mercy of God is calling upon you today. Raise up your hand wherever you are. God bless you there. God bless you there. Say, Lord, I come tonight. Raise up your hand and say, Lord, I'll not allow this night to go by to pass me without having this forgiveness and this salvation. Raise up that hand. If you're raising up your hand, you'll stand up. And as you stand up, you regret all the sins you have committed. You regret that your action pierced the heart and the might of God. You regret your sorrowful that you, by your sin, by your evil, you put a dagger to the loving heart of God and say, Lord, I turn away from everything that brought pain in your heart. Raise up your hand and stand up. When you are standing up, close your eyes. As you close your eyes, imagine all that you have been doing. That place, that thing, that evil, everything. Those are the things that brought sorrow in the heart of the Lord. I say, Lord, no more. I'll not go there again. I'll not do that thing again. I turn, I repent, and I come that you'll forgive me. I've come that you'll save my soul. I come so that I will not die in sin and go to the eternal furnace of fire that burns forever and ever. Tell the Lord and count on the mercy of God and count on the love of God and count on the goodness of God to forgive as you genuinely repent, as you genuinely turn away from everything that is evil. He'll not reject you whosoever as you repent shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved, saved, forgiven, and your name written in the book of life in heaven. I'm praying for you now. Raise up that hand while you're standing up and show the Lord, I key into this. I want this forgiveness and salvation. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, you're a God of love, a God of power, yet a God who means what he says, and he says what he means. And therefore, Lord, we know as you have called us to repentance, and these have indicated that they turn away from their sin, and they repent and turn to you for mercy and love and salvation. Lord, I pray, forgive them in Jesus' name. I pray that the blood of the Lamb that was shed for them will cleanse them from every uncleanness and every condemnation, even at this time, in Jesus' name. Everyone here, everyone online, everyone over the radio, by the television, anywhere, we have heard your word together tonight. I pray that this peace of God, with the pardon, will come to every heart right now. And I pray that you take the name out of the book of the condemned and bring the names into the book of the citizens of heaven and put the joy of salvation 
salvation in every heart right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God, God, uh, God uh, bless you. Keep on standing. I can't sell us out there. And I can't sell us well. You know, ask you for some details of your life and of your name. And they put you put all that down. It will help us to do the follow-up. And then to keep on guiding you in the way that leads to life everlasting. We'll call on our moderating overseer to take over right now. God bless you. You have come to the family of God. This is a memorable day in your life, unforgettable day. Counselors, please, let's quickly, all workers have been discussed in the afternoon. Let's go right into the crowd and then take their names. Please, quickly, quickly, take their details. Quickly. Please don't sit down yet until the counselor has attended to you. Let's spread out by my left and then by my right in the middle. Let's go quickly and be smart about it. God bless you as you do that. Quick, quick. Please give them your right name or the name you are known with in your compound. You have a telephone number your email, please let's fill that in correctly and hand over to the counselor. Please, counselor, we have been told in the afternoon, if you can read and write legibly, you are part of the counseling team. Don't let us miss anyone out. Please, if they have not reached to you, you just wave your hand that I'm here. You are very important to heaven. If your eyes can be opened tonight, you will see the rejoicing in the street of heaven by the angels. Because hundreds of you have come into the kingdom, not just in this Alpha location. Let's do the same in all other locations across the globe. Let's take their details correctly. Let's do that quickly. If you are watching online, and you just gave your life to Christ after the pastor's message this evening, there is a link rolling by in your prayer. Just click on it. You will see a form. And then you can fill it. This one will assist you or assist us to follow you up and also to help you in your newfound faith. It's very important. Submit it through the same process. Also, if you are listening via radio or television, and you just gave your life to Christ, please you can send your name and your phone number and your location address via SMS or WhatsApp message to the number I'm going to read out now. Plus 234 now one five four 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 nine two six three. I repeat it again. Those on radio or television, you just gave your life to Christ. Please send your name, your phone number, and your location address via SMS or WhatsApp. The number is plus two three four nine one five four 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 nine two six three. Counselors, please let's be smart about it. None of us should be sitting down now. The choir members and all other workers. This is the essence of this crusade to get people saved and get them into the kingdom of God. Let's do that quickly. There will be a special lunch hour with Jesus. That is tomorrow afternoon. For all those who give their lives to Jesus, since we started this program, 
on Thursday till tonight. Please, we are inviting you not just because of church, but the GCK convener will be happy to see you there. We are talking about going to heaven, not church. Please make time out tomorrow to come by 3 p.m. You will be taught and assisted in your newfound faith. Please be around. Don't say I belong to this, I belong to that. This is about heaven. This is about Christ. That is the essence of the GCK. Gospel for every creature. So please come by 3 p.m. Before that time you are around. When you come to the compound by my left hand side, as I'm standing on the, on the podium, they will, you'll be directed. There will be convert rally, or what we call banquet, across the globe, depending on your time zone. But for us in Bori, we are going to have it at the Deeper Life Campground in Bori here. The time is 4 p.m. Depending on where you are in the globe, you have to choose the time suitable to you. You may not be able to go a long time with the 4 p.m. of our local time in Nigeria. Please, let's ensure that we're around on the 6th that's a Sunday for this banquet. It's specially meant for you. And if you also receive miracle during the prayer of our Father and the Lord, please, we want to hear your testimony. We want to rejoice with you in our far location here as well as other locations across the globe since we are all connected together. Please, you can send it via WhatsApp that is being displayed on your screen or the testimony link on your screen. You can also record a video of your testimony and share with us via WhatsApp or Telegram. Please do that as the meeting is going on. Counselors, I can see some of you coming back. I want you to give me a sign. Let me start by my right hand side. Let somebody come out and come and wave his or her hand that we are through. By my right hand side to the podium. Am I seeing any hand? Are you waving hand there? Please, we are not joking with it, children. If you are a counselor, you are usher, please. We have finished the right hand side. Please, let's come and wave your hand at me. I'm not seeing any hand. Right at the middle, if, if you are true. Brother, are you waving your hand there? Right, that's beautiful. Thank you very much. Now, let's go a little bit by my left hand side too. See middle. Anyone taking care of that? Let's be fast. Wave your hand or wave the paper at me if you were through. I'm not seeing any hand. What of my extreme left? Extreme left. Extreme left. Please let me be smart about it. Look at people by the fence and also by the upstairs. There are a lot of people there. Please, if they have not attended to you, do well to raise up your hand as the counselors and the ushers, uh, they are passing by you. Please, I'm seeing some counselors. Don't congregate or just stay in one place. Share yourself all around so that we can do that in a very brief moment. Thank you very much as you are doing so. Let's be fast. We go to the extreme back as well. There are a lot of people over there. If they are not attending to you, once you see them, wave your hand. All right, that brother, are you waving your paper at me, the one in my front? 
Are you telling me that you are okay? Wave it again if you are true. All right? You are not. Please, let's be fast. Let's be fast. Make sure that we don't lose anybody. You must take their details. It's important to us and important to heaven. This is the essence of the GCK. To get so safe, conserved in the kingdom. Let's be smart about it. I'm seeing some choir member coming back. I don't think we have finished the backside. Let me find out again. Extreme right. We are true. Wave at me. You can use your paper. and we, Somebody should be there to tell us. Extreme right to the podium. Can I see your hand? Wave at me. Let's be fast. I've not seen any hand. I'm seeing some of you returning back. Does it mean that we have attended to the people at the far back? Please don't return back. Go back. If you have finished your session, go back and help those who are at the far back. Please, let's be smart about it. Right? The, the middle, a little bit to my right. I know you wave at me just now. Can you see wave at me whether you have finished? If you are waving at me, do it properly so that, thank you very much. I can see this middle. Now, to my left side. If we're, all right, God bless you. So, left, extreme left, middle, we're okay. We're now contending with the, uh, this other side by my right hand side. Please, we're waiting for your information. Please don't move yet. The pastor is still seated. Remember, we said this explosion night. Everybody shout explosion night. You will witness what I'm saying now because the power of God is here tonight. It's going to do beyond your expectation. Right? So please, if you are finished, sit down. Ushers, don't come back. Stay in the midst. Of the people, so that when they receive their miracle, you are the one who will bring them out. Those who are on the wheelchair, stay by them and encourage them. Don't force them up. The power of God will take them up, but encourage them and speak to them. The pastor have prayed, believe the word, and you will see them stand up. Somebody is deaf and all that. You stay by them as the pastor pray, encourage them, and said, The pastor have prayed. You will see miracle today. Please, those by my right hand side, I'm waiting for information. But my, anybody to tell us that we are true by my right hand side, I'm not seeing, seeing any person. As you are seated, be calling upon the name of the Lord that tonight my expectation is great. Remember, we said your expectation determines your realization. Expect something great from God tonight. Close your eyes if you are finished. Be praying. Be, let your voice be heard in the court of heaven. Let heaven know that somebody is, is expecting something. I'm waiting for those of us in the right hand side. By my right hand side. Can, all right. God bless you. I can see you waving at me. We are now going to rise up. Our Father and the Lord is, is up to pray. You are welcome, sir. Thank you. Praise the Lord. If you are there, let heaven hear your voice. I say, Praise the Lord. <laughs> Expectation, realization. Anybody expecting anything there today? Expecting a miracle, expecting healing, expecting deliverance. Realization will come. At the final, amen, you check up yourself and you will discover that that realization of the healing, of the deliverance, of the breaking of the yoke, of the miracle, it's happened already. I see you giving testimony tonight. 
you raise up one hand and you lay the other hand where you have the challenge. Raise up one hand. Identify the problem. And lay your hand there. And when we mention the name of Jesus, a miracle must happen to you. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I bring everyone, everyone here, everyone over there, everyone online, everyone everywhere, to you right now. Whatever the challenge, whatever the pain, whatever the affliction, whatever the sickness, Lord, touch them now. Heal them in Jesus' name. Every affliction of the enemy, every evil power operating in every life, I cancel that now in Jesus' name. Affliction of the devil, torment of the devil, works of the devil in the head, in the mind, in the spirit, in the soul, walking about. I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that every sin swollen in the body, any part of the body, touch them now. Remove that swelling in Jesus' name. Long-standing sickness like a mountain. Lord, you have assured us that if I speak to this mountain to be removed without any doubt in the heart, believing that that mountain will move. Mountain of cancer, come out in Jesus' name. Back problem, tummy problem, kidney problem, lungs, Come out in Jesus' name. That blindness, I command, blindness vanish away. Lord, touch their eyesight now. Give them sight. Open the blind eyes and clear up the dim sight in Jesus' name. Those who are deaf, and done. The Lord bring your miracle of hearing right now. And your miracle of speaking right now. Lord, I pray that those who have diabetes, urinate, urinate, urinate. Lord, I pray it comes to an end. At this time, you are healed in Jesus' name. Is your blood, flow of blood, many months, many years, dry up now in Jesus' name. Arthritis, be healed. Paralysis, be healed. Broken bones, be healed. Lord, everyone now, everywhere, touch everyone. Grant everyone their expectation and we pray lord as we have mentioned the name of jesus the name above every name there is realization of miracle healing deliverance everywhere right now thank you lord for the confirmation in jesus name we pray it is done it is done. Realization. You've got it. Check up yourself. You've got it right there. Realization.